Okay, let's discuss plexuses. Plexuses are going to be groups of nerves that actually come from um, bundles of anterior rami. Um, up here in the superior portion on this model I have, I'm showing you two of them. We have the cervical plexus and the brachial plexus. Here at the levels of C1 to C4, we have the cervical plexus, and the cervical plexus is going to innervate muscles of the head, neck, and upper shoulders. And another really important branch off of the cervical plexus is the phrenic nerve. And the phrenic nerve is what innervates the diaphragm, which is super important for respiration. There's a saying in medicine that C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. And that is because the phrenic nerve um, comes from the C4 area. And we do have some axons that come from the C3 and C5 areas as well. But something that's really important to consider in patients who come in with spinal cord injuries is that if that injury occurs anywhere between that C345 area, their phrenic nerve might be damaged. That is important because remember the phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm. And if that nerve isn't able to stimulate that muscle, the person will have a lot of problems breathing on their own. Then we have the brachial plexus. And the brachial plexus is going to come from the anterior rami of levels C5 through T1. We have further divisions um, or organizational levels, I should say, that go into trunks, divisions, cords, and then what are known as terminal branches. And those terminal branches are the things that you're going to be more familiar with. So here we have the left um, brachial plexus, Here's the right brachial plexus. And then I'll zoom out so that you can see some examples of those terminal branches. Here we have the right brachial plexus, and this would be the right median nerve. On the thumb side, remember thumb side is where we find the radius, so that's where we have the radial nerve. And then on the pinky side, that's where we would have the ulnar nerve. But if we were to follow these back, those nerves come from the brachial plexus. Here in the thoracic region, we actually don't have a thoracic plexus. The anterior rami of these thoracic spinal nerves actually just form the intercostal nerves. So whenever you're looking at this area, um, we don't have a thoracic plexus. These are just the intercostal nerves. And then remember that intercostal just refers to in between the ribs. As we move inferiorly, we have two more plexuses. In the areas of L1 to L4, we have the lumbar plexus. And then in the areas of L4 to S4, we have the sacral plexus. Remember that we have a plexus on the right side and the left side. So let's first look at the right side. Here again is that right lumbar plexus, and the main nerve that is going to come from that plexus is the femoral nerve. So since we're on the right side of the body, right lumbar plexus, the main nerve that comes off of that would be the right femoral nerve. And this nerve is going to innervate the anterior thigh muscles. Let's focus on the left side of the body now. Here we have the left sacral plexus, remember L4 to S4, and the major nerve that's going to come from that is the sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve is the largest and longest nerve we have in the body. And a memory trick I like to share for that is that the S sciatic nerve comes from the S sacral plexus. The sciatic nerve actually runs through the greater sciatic notch, which is a structure that we looked at several weeks ago. So it's kind of cool um, now that we're starting to tie in some skeletal features with some nervous system structures. Additionally, if you've ever heard of sciatica, um, that occurs when um, we have a herniated intervertebral disc in this area, um, which is essentially pinching the nerve 
Um, and what that does is that causes a sharp shooting pain down the posterior side of the leg. So I hope those tips help you learn the plexuses. Always go a little bit slow. If you kind of talk through the location and where the branches come off, I think you guys will do just fine with this.